Hey everybody, Alex here, welcome back. Today we're doing a pretty large TypeScript JavaScript project, and it's actually a real world project that has a good example of a large build. Let me show it to you. So this is the NativeScript plugins repository, which uses the NX workspaces. If you're not familiar with what NX workspaces is, it's basically a way to organize your code. You can build React applications, Angular applications, Vue, pretty much anything you want, even .NET. And if you go to nx.dev, you can find out more information about it. Smart, extensible, build framework, okay? So it's built on top of that. And by the way, if you're interested in a course on NativeScript with NX, I got a link down below in the description. All right, so here is plugins. And uh, this is all the official plugins for NativeScript, all up to date. And you can see there's there's a bunch of them here, there may be 30 plugins in there. Now this tells you how to get this on your machine, how to get it up and running and how to uh, contribute if you want to. But we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is clone this and I'm gonna build it. So that's gonna take a little while. Git clone. All right, that didn't take so long to uh, clone. And I'm gonna do it on this machine as well. Now these two machines here are both Apple Silicon machines. One is a M1 MacBook Air and the other one is a MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. However, this is the binned version, which means that it has eight cores CPU and a 14 core GPU. So this has eight cores four performance and four efficiency. This one has eight cores, six performance and two efficiency. And the reason I'm uh, doing these two against each other is because, well, maybe you already have an Intel machine and you're trying to upgrade and you're trying to decide, well, should I go for the M1 MacBook Air? Is that gonna be enough for me? Or should I go and splurge a little bit more and spend the extra, what, $1,300 to get, uh, basically it's double the price, to get the uh, lowest model of the MacBook Pro. So that's why I'm doing these two machines together. If you wanna see more JavaScript related tests or TypeScript build tests or Angular React, things like that, I'll also be testing those on the two 16 inch machines that I have here, the M1 Max and the M1 Pro. These have 10 cores each. So throw a comment down below what you wanna see and which machines you want me to test. But for now, this is what we're doing today. I got the plugins repository on the machines. And in order to build this, we first have to prepare it. So to prepare it, you, you do a setup command, which will download all the packages. And I'm gonna test that as well. But I'm not gonna make that a race because that requires network access. So I will run these individually and time it, and we'll see who does the network uh, request and NPM installation faster. And then the next step will be the actual build, which is all local. So we'll do those at the same time as a race. All right, so the first step is to do npm run setup. And like I said, I am going to time this and uh, I'll do it one at a time. So let's go. Now, before doing this, I made sure that all my software packages are up to date. I got the same version of Homebrew, Node, NPM, Yarn. Those are the requirements for this. And of course, same versions of the operating system and everything else. That one is done and it finished in 27 seconds. Let's do this one and 29 seconds for the M1 Pro machine. Hmm, I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> Seriously though, if you've seen any of the recent videos I've been doing, the M1 MacBook Air still holds up and it's a pretty pretty good machine for developers, I would say, especially for the what you're getting for the price you're paying. Okay, let's do the main build now. Now normally what you would do is say NPM start here and then you can choose, uh, this gives you an interactive menu, what you wanna build. So you can uh, build the different plugins individually like uh, Twitter, Google sign in, Facebook, security, debug, and so on. All these different uh, plugins for native script. By the way, native script, if any of you don't know what it is, it's uh, a way to build native apps in Android and iOS using JavaScript. All right, so I'm not gonna do the interactive menu because I wanna time it. And uh, let's take a look at the code in Visual Studio Code. So I've got the plugins repo open. And this is a good opportunity for us to actually check out what Visual Studio Code looks like on these two machines, if you are considering these two. I wanna take a look at package.json on both of these, because this will tell me how to run the command individually without the interactive menu. Okay, so uh, you know what, let's full screen this. Here's full screen, and I'm gonna close uh, the navigation bar so we can see how much space we have. So it looks like we do have a little bit more space on the new machine. This is a 14 inch MacBook Pro, by the way, not the 16, so it's a smaller variety, but yet it's still a bigger screen, slightly bigger than the MacBook Air. 
here on the MacBook Air, we have 43 and a half lines. On the 14 inch MacBook Pro, we have 46 lines that fit. All the settings are at default. So it looks like what we want to run is uh, npm start. And then we'll give it the command that we want to run. So I'm going to say time npm start and then at native script dot build all. That's the full name of that command. It's one of the options that comes down. So I'm going to run that one and time it. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Now this is going to be a race because they don't need network access. So let's go. All right. All right. Looks pretty close right now. They're both printing out the information about the same rate. I'd say maybe one is a little bit faster. Huh, it's really close. I don't know who's going to win this one. The MacBook Air seems to be going a little bit faster. We'll see in the end, though. Ah, there's periodic times that it prints out, and it looks like the MacBook Pro is a little bit ahead by a few milliseconds. All right, so it's pretty close, and I think this is going to be a close race. As far as the temperature on the machine, it says um, 66 degrees on the MacBook Air. Of course, no fans there. And 63 degrees... 65 now on the MacBook Pro. The fans are off on that machine as well. So they're both pretty quiet doing this build. Now what's going to contribute to the speed here? There's going to be processor time as well as the SSD access time. And these new MacBook Pros have really, really fast record breaking SSDs in them. So a lot of the compilation process that you see going on is files being copied back and forth. All right, we have a winner, <laughs> sort of. The MacBook Pro finished in one minute, 38 seconds, 0.69. <laughs> the MacBook Air finished in one minute, 38 seconds, 0.83. So a few milliseconds behind, not a huge difference. Let's do that again and see if the first time was just a fluke and if we can repeat that closeness. Because if this is what you're doing, if you're doing TypeScript builds all day long, then maybe you should save some money and buy the MacBook Air. Now, of course, if you're doing mobile app development, you're gonna be doing more than just these kinds of TypeScript builds. Or you're gonna be opening up Xcode, Android Studio, running those simulators and emulators, and that's gonna require a lot of processing power as well as uh, system resources. So I've done a bunch of videos on that as well. Go check those out. This is mostly focused on uh, if you're doing front end development using one of the popular frameworks out there or even plain TypeScript or JavaScript development. So if that's the case, I would say maybe uh, the way to go is just getting a MacBook Air M1. But if you're going to be doing mobile app builds and more demanding tasks like that, then you could probably use the extra RAM that these machines offer, uh, the new MacBook Pros. This machine has 32 gigs of RAM. This MacBook Air only 16. So that'll definitely help you out. But as far as uh, this TypeScript test, we've got 138.23, 138.54. Folks, I'm going to call that a draw. I know that technically this one is a little bit faster, but this is way too close. And I would pick the cheaper machine if you're doing this kind of work. And that's all you're going to be doing. Okay, folks, if you found this interesting or entertaining, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Helps me out quite a bit. And if that subscribe button is still red, it should be gray. That's, that's really the right color it should be. Consider subscribing for more content like this. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time.